Hello folks and welcome to Puente Pixels. In this episode we shall be building and deploying a baby vol wreaths. This is a baby of all wreaths, like the mother of all wreaths from Gilbert Engineering. So this has 448 pixels in it in seven rows of 64. There, as you can sort of see, the pixels are spaced very close together on the inside rim, um, expanding out to maybe sort of two inch spacing at the outside. With this baby of all wreaths we also got an additional uh, G-skins that goes on it. And so so these G-skins are polypropylene uh, printed coverings that will go on top of the baby of all wreaths and can be changed out. They're sort of held in by these um, plastic studs which go through the corners sort of at the edge and this allows you to change the look of your wreath. So we have this uh, blue and white one with bells on it and ornaments. Hopefully this will look great on the house. So here we can see a close-up of one of the 3D printed mounts for the baby of all wreaths along with the half inch EMT tubing that will be used to support and mount it. So the idea is that we're going to drill holes through the Coro and then put these uh, zip ties through. These are about 5mm across and so this needs a 3 16 inch drill hole which is unfortunately slightly too big to pass through the holes in the mount. So we're going to drill a smaller 1 8 inch hole through and then take the mount out and then drill the bigger holes. So this is the mounting bracket at the other end of the piece of EMT and we're just going to uh, drill some of these 1 8 inch holes through as many of the slots in the 3D printed mount that we can reach that's not going to collide with the pixels that are in there to keep it in place or with the mount itself. So if we just take the piece of EMT out. And now we can take the pixels out, take the mount off and finish drilling the rest of the holes. So here, after I've drilled out all of the four corners I can easily get to with the drill, I'm just going to take a reamer like this and use it to mark through the holes um, in the 3D printed base like this. So it'll give me uh, an indentation that I can put the drill into once I take the mount off and then I can drill the rest of the holes. So now we have all four of the 3D printed mounts zip tied onto the wreath. The next job is to install all of the 448 pixels. So this is one of the pixel strings. This was a custom made string I had made up by Ray Wu. So instead of the normal 100 pixels at 4 inch spacing, this is 112 pixels at 2 inch spacing. And so we have four of these, which will give us the 448 we need. So two of these have had the pigtails added onto them. So this is this uh, green piece of wire here with the uh, DIY LED Express connector that we use for the rest of our show. And this has just been uh, soldered onto the end of this pixel string and then two bits of heat shrink. There's the small diameter black heat shrink and then a larger diameter uh, clear heat shrink which you probably can't see over the top of all three. So the next thing to do is to go to X-Lights and double check the wiring model and make sure we push all of the pixels into the right places on the model. So here we are inside X-Lights with the baby of all wreaths highlighted in yellow and we will show you how to set up both the model 
here and all of the various groups for the submodels inside Xlides. So to show you how to set this up inside Xlides, we will swap to a clean preview which will make things a little easier to see. So although Xlights has this handy create new download model option, unfortunately there is no Babyville wreath model available. So Pixel Pro displays have what they call their PPD certified models for Gilbert Engineering. And if we sort of scroll down here, there is this PPD Gilbert Engineering Babyville wreaths model. If you actually download it, you'll find it's actually a model for the mother of all wreaths. Hopefully they will fix this. So what we will need to do is download the mother of all wreath models and modify it for the baby. So to do this, we come up here, click on the create new download and click and drag out. This can take a little bit of time the first time, but it should pop up a dialog box with all of the vendors models. So we'll just hide the Boscoyo Studio ones for now. So for Gilbert Engineering, the baby and the mother of all wreaths are inside the high density area. There is a wreaths area down here, but this doesn't actually contain the wreath. So if we go into high density, we can see there's the mother of all wreaths, uh, and you can see this is the mother and this is the baby. So we will hit insert model, and we will get the model here. So we will just zoom in a little bit so we can see it a little more easily. And we will also change the size of the pixels to make them a little bit easier to see on here. And we make sure to hit return so that the things actually take effect. So as we can see here, this has two strings with 320 nodes per string, giving 640 pixels in 10 layers, which is right for the mother but incorrect for the baby. So what we actually want is two strings with 224 pixels on them. And these are arranged in seven layers or seven rings of 64. So it looks like that. So we'll just rename this one, and since I already have one, I'll have to call it number two. So in order to wire the prop, we have a couple of choices of what you want to make the starting location, and that's controlled here. So we have currently bottom inner clockwise. There are other options, but this is probably the one that makes the most sense. And that's sort of shown here as the little blue pixel, which is the starting one. If we click on the prop and go to wiring view, it'll be a little easier to see. We'll make this a little bigger as it's a very large prop. If we zoom in a little, we can see here is the starting pixel here, 1-1. One, one, and the pixels are running round in loops anti-clockwise because this is looking from the back until we get up to pixel 224 up here and then we start the new string with a new pigtail and that runs around for 224 pixels until we finally get to pixel 224 right here at the end. So now that we have this diagram of the wiring, all that remains to do is to push all 448 pixels into the back of the prop.
Oh, thank God for that. So now with the wiring complete, let's jump back into X-Lite, set up the set models and do some testing. So we're back in x lights and if we want to take advantage of some of the fancy effects we can do with all of these pixels, we need to get the sub-models set up so we can do things like draw diamonds or light up alternate spokes and things like that and that's controlled through this submodels. Unfortunately since this is the model for the mother of all wreaths then this submodels will also need editing for the baby. So if we click on this and bring up the submodels so things like this matrix here defines 10 lines for each of the rings and we only have seven rings. So what we need to do to each of these sub-models is to go through and edit out the ones that refer to nodes or pixels greater than the 448 that we actually have in the baby. So we can delete this row, we can delete this next row, we can delete this row, and then we're set. And we will rename this baby and this is not actually letting me rename it because I already have a submodel with these names. So similarly for the bottom part we can see these bottom lines refer to rings that aren't present on the baby so, so we can delete these and similarly with the full this is referring to things we don't have, so we can delete that one, and that one, and that one. Unfortunately, with the spokes of models, this is where it gets really tedious. So, as we can see, we're lighting up one pixel in each of the rings, but the last three rings refer to pixels that we don't have. So we need to delete these extra ones that aren't present in the baby. And unfortunately, we have to lather, rinse, and repeat this for all 64 spokes. Similarly, for the spokes even and the spokes odd, these also will refer to ones, say, like these, 572, 636. And so you have to go through and just remove the pixels that are greater than 448, which are not present in the model. So we've got the spokes even, the spokes odd, we have rings. These are a lot more easy to do because all we need to do is just remove the 8, 9 and 10 rings which don't exist in the baby. Similarly with the ring evens, we can just delete the outer rings that aren't present and the same with the ring odds. Oops, easy. Let's make sure we get the right one. So for these stars, some of these are fine, but at some point you will get to a star which isn't actually on the actual wreath. So these later ones here, star 12, star 11, maybe star 10. So these later stars could be deleted since they're not on the fully on the wreath. These hooks counterclockwise and hook clockwise and there's another 64 of each of these are very similar to the spokes they just have refer to pixels that we don't have so we can just take all of these off i wish there was a quicker uh, way to do this but i don't know of one so it's just a question of going through all of the sub models and fixing them and then for some of these diamonds these are these are all referring to ones that are off the wreath. These ones here are okay, but these ones outside are not, and so can probably be deleted. Similarly with these swags, the, the inner ones are okay but some of the later ones 
just disappear off the wreath and you can either choose to include them or not but all of these will refer to pixels that don't exist in the model for our baby of all wreath models we left these snowflake spokes unaltered they don't really look right where well, you could move these branches a bit further down so they looked a little bit more like a snowflake but we've just kept them as is and similarly with these zigzags some of them will work fine but at some point these will transition off the wreath and you can just delete these outer ones this one for example doesn't contain any That one is probably not very useful either. And it's debatable whether you want to include that or not. And to save you having to do the tedious editing, I will make a link to the exported X Lite model for the Baby Voris available in the description of the video. So the final thing that you'll probably want to do is to make groups out of the submodels. So if we unfold the model here, we can see all of the submodels. So what we can do is if we want a even spokes group, we can click on the spokes even, right click and say create group from selections. And we can do something like GE baby of all wreath even spokes. And that will make that and we can do similarly with the odd spokes. So GE baby ball wreath odd spokes. And as you can just about see, so this is lighting up the odd spokes. This one is lighting up the even spokes. And we can do similar things for the rings, for the stars, the hooks. If you wanted to do like every alternate hook or every fourth hook, you can create submodel groups for these, which makes the sequencing a lot easier. And so, with all of the submodels set up, we can use Xlights to test out the completed wreath. So this is now the back of the completed wreath, the pigtails attached and the power injection wires. We have the first pigtail which is running the first 224 pixels which starts here, runs all the way around and its power injection is over there up at the top. Um, and then we have the second string of 224 pixels which is being fed by this pigtail which is led round and starts somewhere over there-ish and finishes up here at pixel 448 and then these are the Mouillet uh, two pin connectors that we're using for power injection. Uh, the bases have now been zip tied to the wreath and so all we need to do is flip it over attach the G skins cover and then put the long pieces of EMT through the mounts and fasten it to the wall. And so this is a view of the front of the wreath with all of the pixels poking through. Um, you can see in a couple of places I made a slight mistake drilling the sort of holes through for the clamps and had to re-drill but in general it's not too bad and you can see the zip ties which are holding the uh, mounts on. Now we just need to put the skin on and then it'll be complete and that will hide some of the mistakes so that'll be fine. So here is the baby of all wreaths uh, lying face down with the EMT tubes inserted through the 3D printed mounts. The EMT tubing has been cut to a length of 100 inches which will fit from our porch step underneath the overhanging roof. 
One pro tip if people are doing this themselves, make sure to remove the label from your EMT first because it goes through the mounts much easier. So this is a close up of one of the 3D printed mounts. We've put a M5 by 16mm screw into the back of the 3D printed mount to secure it to the tube. The mounts themselves are not actually threaded but this one seems to fit. Okay. Next step is to turn the wreath the right way up and mount it vertically and we'll see what it looks like. So now we have the completed wreath mounted to the house on its frame with its G-skin on the front and if we turn the lights down we can see the wreath running a test pattern. And so I think the 448 pixels in this high density prop will allow us to run some really cool effects and will make a really great addition to the show. Thank you very much for watching, we hope you enjoyed this build video. If you'd like to see more of our videos, please like and subscribe to us on YouTube. And thanks very much for watching.